In this video, watch an SMB trader teach a profitable trade setup for a very weak market. And hey, we are in a very weak market, which I'm going to explain also in this video. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafieri, co-founder of SMB Capital, and we're a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan. And I'm also the author of the trading classic, One Good Trade, and the playbook. Let's get to work on sharing this important trading lesson so you can grow your trading account. So Alex, uh, let's get a little context as to who you are. So where are you in your development at SMB? Um, I'm a brand new intern at SMB. This is my first playbook. Um, I've been at SMB for, I think this is going to be my, my second full week. Um, and this is my first playbook. And I'm trying to develop my playbook out to have plays to where I can make money in all markets. I've had success in certain markets with certain plays. But I want to keep developing my playbook so I can, you know, constantly take money out of the market in all environments. What were you doing before this in terms of trading? Um, I've just been trading uh, personal accounts and family accounts um, since about my junior year of college. And I would spent the fr a whole year by myself just trading those accounts out of school. Um, had some success, had some struggles. And yeah, just looking to keep getting better. And where are you right now? Um, in my trading. No, no, where, where, where are you? Oh, I'm in, uh, I'm in Illinois. I live in a farm town in Illinois, uh, about an hour and a half hour south half of Chicago. Chicago. Okay, great. Well, welcome, and uh, we won't be too tough on you. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> okay, so for my first playbook, I, I playbooked a 60-minute gap fade on GME. This trade was executed on 1-7-2022. And let's get into it. For my trade strategy, I'm looking for a catalyst that gaps the stock up over 5%. Um, in this case, the catalyst was that they were they were having an NFT release. I want sediment not to be in favor of breakouts or follow through in the general market. And I'm gonna use a one minute opening range trade to take my entry and my stop will go, it, the stop goes at the high of day. I'm gonna use VWAP as an area to add to my position or to move my stop to break even. And I'm looking for a pickup in volume on open as institutions sell into the gap. All right. So, mm -hmm. Alex, so when you say sentiment not in favor of breakouts or follow through, why are you saying that? Um, I want like more. I want the breadth to be more deteriorating for this process, because, I mean, if the market is following through, you don't really want to be fading a gap if it's getting follow through. And, you know, because it'd be a break. It could be a breakaway gap. Um, so you want to you want to have a lot of situational awareness for this play and you want to know that the breadth of the market is deteriorating that um yeah you just want to really be paying attention to the to the general market and know when these plays work. I don't know that others who are listening right now know what you mean by the breadth of the market is deteriorating. Uh, do you mean we're in a bearish market? Um I for me, how I gauge that is I'm looking at how many, what percentage of stocks are above their 20 day moving average, what percentage are above the 50 day, 200 day. And if we're seeing, you know, that number go down over time, then the breath is deteriorating in the market. Okay. And you're seeing that? Yes. And so during this time, I was seeing that I was seeing a lot of, uh, I was seeing a lot of those numbers going down during this time. If you want to learn three more real world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right hand corner of your screen. That will open up the free registration page in a new window. So don't worry, you won't lose this video. You can also visit tradingworkshop.com to register for this free intensive workshop. You're going to learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. So then if you look at fundamental uh, behaviors of the stock, GME is a thin stock that fundamentally makes no sense and is overvalued. Um, and at this time, press releases are being faded with no follow through. Institutional ownership and shortfall had decreased over the last six months. And we ideally want the short flow to be under 20%. And we ideally want the institutional ownership to be under 50%. And also during this time, meme stocks have not been in place since January of 2021. And they're in their down cycle under their key moving averages. 
So for the entry positioning, I want to go full size. I think what you're saying is a good trade strategy is to look for things that are gapping up because the overall market is weak, bearish, and the stocks that are gapping up are not as likely in this market to follow through. I think you're saying that. Yes. And I'm looking for institutions to use this as an opportunity to unload their supply. And that's essentially what I'm trying to take advantage of. Yeah, and I think, but I think you're saying something else. I think you're also saying that it's true that in this market, things that gap up are less likely to follow through, but it's also true that GME, which is a meme stock, is following a pattern, is, is in a tranche of stocks that are also, in of themselves, not likely to follow through when they're gapping up. Is that fair? Yes, completely yeah. agree. Completely agree. Okay, so what you're saying here is when, we've get, when we get something that gaps up and is also a meme stock, that's gonna get us super interested to think about fading it because we're not seeing follow through with those particular types of stocks in this particular type of market. Exactly, we're noticing that okay. theme and we're trying to capture that. Good, and I, I wanna make this point. So during our 11 o'clock meeting today, we talked about how important it is to pick the right stocks. If you pick the right stock, you're really good with stock selection, you actually don't even have to trade that well. Choosing your stocks is in of it of itself a way to generate some edge. If you're in something like a Tesla today and you trade it on the short side, you don't have to be that good. If you're in something like IWM today and you're trading it on the short side, you don't have to be that good. If you're in something like GE today, or GM today, and you find some resistance area and you trade it on the short side, you don't have to be that good. If on the open, you were trading Netflix from the long side, you don't have to be that good. And so, uh, super important to be, to be picking the right stocks, but it's also super important, and people a lot of times talk about trading psychology and they think they're getting in the way of their success. And we sort of say, well, trading psychology comes into play when you're a little bit more mature in your career and it's, it's more towards making more and being your, your top trader, being your best trader. And probably not the reason why a lot of developing traders aren't doing as, as well as they'd like to at the beginning. Um, but you're pointing out, and I, I want to point this out to you and to to others, you're actually pointing out something that has edge. What you're talking about here is not just a trade idea, it's not just an opinion. This is something that has worked, this is something that has worked for a long period of time, this is something that's going to continue to work. This is a really good job of pointing out a pattern that has edge in of itself. And you're trading, you've traded the right stock to trade, which in of itself has edge, and you're trading a pattern which also has edge. And if you just sort of stick to the right stocks and picking patterns that can have edge, again, you don't really have to trade that well. And so very good job by you picking a good pattern and picking a good stock. And I just want to say one more thing about the bearish tenor of the market. So Thursday after the close, we had a meeting with all of our traders and we said the market has changed. We had been saying that for a long period of time, but we really pounded the table even more on this idea. And what we're seeing in marketplaces, this isn't our opinion, this is just what we're seeing. What we're seeing in marketplaces is extreme weakness. We were as weak as I've seen the market be in a really long period of time at the beginning of this week. I have not seen tick be that consistently low, that consistently negative, negative 1,200, negative 1,400 into the close after we had traded down almost 8 to 10%. I have not seen that in a long period of time. And there may be a lot of people out there that are buying pull-ins. That's not working. There may be a lot of people out there playing bounces. That's not going to work most of the time. you got to really be careful about when you're actually going to get into your bounce trades. And we've been talking to the desk about 
being super selective on the long side and leaning short when you're actually seeing some weakness because for the market we're in right now, and this is the market we're in right now, the market we're in right now is bearish. The market right now that we're in, the big players are concerned about the Fed. They're concerned that the Fed is too hawkish, that they really are not concerned about stocks, that they're mostly in concerned about inflation, and that inflation is going up, and they're going to do what they can to curb inflation so that doesn't get out of control. The market right now is concerned with, and this is related, the su supply constraints. We saw Tesla release earnings today, which were pretty good, but they're saying we can't do as well as we want because we can't get the materials we need to build more cars. We're going to look after the close to see if Apple says anything about the su supply constraints in their earnings release. We're concerned right now about Russia and, and Ukraine. That needs, to, that needs to sort itself out. We're concerned about energy prices. That's a little bit related to Russia and Ukraine. We've been concerned about COVID for a little bit. That seems to be waning. But we've got all of these things that the market is overall interested in. The most important thing is inflation. The most important thing is how the Fed has signaled and will signal how it's going to cut or curb inflation how it's going to curb the impact of inflation on the economy. And this is different than the prior years when we were in an uptrending market. The market is different. The Fed is signaling that it is going to react differently. The Fed had been dovish. The Fed is now hawkish. Inflation is now a concern. It didn't used to be. And, and it seems as if inflation is lasting longer than we, we thought at the beginning. This is a central problem driving the marketplace. And all of our work, all of our patterns, all that we do here needs to start from that big picture. And it is possible tomorrow that we enter a new market and this bearish market ends. That's very unlikely. But we're going to need to see improvement on the Fed being so hawkish. We're going to need to see improvement on inflation. We're going to need to see improvement on our supply constraints. We're going to need to see improvement in Russia and Ukraine. And until we see that, right now, all we're seeing is a bearish market that wants to trade lower. And so you're trading in that market and you're finding a pattern that really fits nicely into the construct of that overall market, into that big picture of that overall market, which is, let me find something that's gapping up that shouldn't have gapped up this much, and let me, let me lean on it to the short side and make a pattern trade in a bearish market in a stock that probably doesn't have very good fundamentals overall and see what happens. So you're doing a great job with your stock selection, you're doing a really good job with your pattern selection, and all of that's matching the market structure, the market bearishness that we're seeing right now. All right, let's see what you got. Yeah, thank you very much. So, okay, so now we'll talk about entry positioning. Um, personally, I take full size right away on one minute opening range breakdown since I'm only looking for a quick one leg trade to add cash flow to my book. You can add to the position on loss of VWAP with a stop above, but you really wanna be reading the tape if you're doing that. Um, you. Use one minute opening range break high or high of pre-market to manage your risk. You do not want to risk more than 30% of your daily stop since if this works, if it works against you, you don't want to risk your whole daily stop right away and lose that in a couple minutes into open. Um, this is a play I use to generate cash flow to hold on to my high conviction swings. If you want to keep 10 to 20% of the position for a runner, that is totally okay. Um, and then sale positioning. I'm looking to take profits into the high of the previous day. If the high of the previous day is not hit, then I kind of want to take my profits within the first 60 minutes and move on and not waste too much time on that name. And then also I'm looking to sell the position if my stop is hit, whether that's the high of the pre-market, the high of the opening range trade, or if you know VWAP is recaptured and it builds above VWAP. 
Um, the intraday fundamentals on GME, the daily volume on this day was 12137000 The average volume at that time was 4249000 So this is 285% relative volume. The average true range at GME on that time was 15. The short float was 13%, which is, is down from what it was before. And the institutional ownership is 28%, which is also down. Those are two things you want to see. And the VIX at this time was at 19.9. So reasons to sell. So profit taking, like I talked about, I like to call this a 60 minute gap fade. So I want to be out at, after 60 minutes. Um, you can take profits at the high of the previous day, or if you have a different price target and it reaches there. Reasons to sell, risk reduction. If the high of the pre-market is hit and stops you out, if the high of the day on the opening range trade is hit and stops you out, if you moved your stop to break even after VWAP was lost, and you scratch after the stock regains and builds above VWAP, or if you see an, an unusual buyer in the take, maybe you see volume dry up and you see an unusual buyer, that could also be a sign to cover your short. Okay, now looking at bigger picture, because I think this is really important. So bigger picture during this time, the SPY was range bound, but it wasn't just range bound because breakouts were being sold into. Like, like Mike talked about earlier, the Fed was turning hawkish at the end of QE and a raising rate environment. I think that QE um, ending is very, uh, like the Fed reducing the balance sheet is very important towards like your situational awareness of the market and what types of plays you want to be looking for. And also meme stocks have not been in place since last January and are in their down cycle. Um, I also noted that gaps have been used for bigger players to sell into during this uh, bigger picture time. So then if we look at the weekly, you can see GME entered its down cycle on the weekly chart on November 29th on the weekly time frame. You can also see that the gap is into a declining 10-day moving average, which is a great spot to fade. Um, then if we look on the daily, you can see the daily enters its down cycle on November 26th. I'm noticing a lot of these unfilled gaps as subtle signs of supply and, and subtle signs that there is very little demand for this stock. Some levels I'm looking at on the daily that I highlighted is 164 is the high of pre-market, 16040 is the high of the one minute opening range break, 15762 is support after not being able to hold above VWAP, and then some take profit zones at 143.29, 60 minutes into the session, and another take profit zone at the high of the previous day. So on the 15 minute, you can notice that GME gaps up 33% in 45 minutes, but it was only done on 632,000 shares after its press release. You can see that it sells off on 2.9 million shares in the first 45 minutes in the session, which is a big pickup in volume compared to the move up. Um, you wanna really manage your risk against the high of pre-market or the high of that opening range trade. And you wanna protect break even once price rejects and pushes off VWAP. And then again, I noted the areas that I'm looking to take profits in at the high of the previous day or after 60 minutes into the session. Here on the one minute, you can really see so in the one minute, you can see the one minute opening range break trade triggers three minutes into the session at 155.76 when the low of the first candle is breached, stops go to high of day. At 9.45, there is an unfilled gap and a pickup in volume as we push off a of VWAP. And to me, this is a, this is a, like, you can kind of see it, it's, it's smaller, but you can see that there's an unfilled, unfilled gap at VWAP and that's showing me that there's a sign of excessive supply. And that's, you know, that's a key to either move your stop up or you can add to the position there. I think it's a good time to add too because you know your range. If you if you set a tight if, if you set a tight stop there, your range is pretty is pretty tight. Your risk reward levels are pretty good, um, and I think that that's just really key to note. You can also see that uh, we're pushing off VWAP. We're not really even getting close to VWAP. We're being able to touch it, and I noted the take profit zones on here. Um, and last thing I want to notice is you can see on the first one minute, big players are selling straight into the gap as the theme continues. And then trade management, um, I just, same one minute chart, but I put, I would add size on the unfilled gap at VWAP loss. And I'm looking to lock in gains after the first hour of the session. So we were talking with some of the guys during our chat this morning. How would you describe this chart? Um, distribution. How would you judge your stock selection? Um, I think my stock selection was really good. I do have one thing that I don't like about this chart. I think the uh, one minute opening range trade, I think the range on that one minute opening range trade is pretty wide. That's the only thing I don't like about my stock selection.
But I think the fact that I'm picking, uh, you know, I'm seeing the deteriorate, I'm having situational awareness to see the deterioration in the market and, you know, move off plays that aren't really working anymore and to try to move towards the plays that are working. With GMEs can, can do that a little bit, right? But after it, it starts to go towards VWAP and starts to fail, if you look at the chart there, I mean, what would you say about it? I would say that there's an even better chance to add size when it's failing under that VWAP in that really tight range, um, that you get even a better chance to add size than on the opening range trade. Because on the opening range trade, you're not really going to be able to press it that much with that wide of a range. But on that unfilled gap at VWAP, um, I think you could probably press it a little more because it's, it's such a tight range. I, sometimes I feel like I need to communicate better. And Kurt, we keep talking about this. But, Sorry about that. Um, Sorry about that. What I'm trying to tell you right here is you've done a good job picking a, a stock. What, what I'm trying to do is tell you you've done a good job picking a pattern because you don't see a chart like that very often. I mean, it's very weak. There's steady selling in it. It's a beautiful staircase stepping lower chart. That tells you you've done a good job with your stock selection. You want to go back and say to yourself, hey, why did I do such a good job picking this stock? Why did I do such a good job picking this pattern? This is the type of pattern you can make a lot of money trading at. I know this is only your second week as an intern at the firm, but you can make a lot of money trading this pattern. And we want you to do more of that. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, totally, thank you. So then what did I learn from this trade? I learned that fading gaps, that gap up over 5% on news can be a great play for your playbook while the market is not following through or is in a downtrend. I put fading gaps can give you great risk reward levels to work off of. Fading gaps can provide quick one leg trades that pay fast and provide cash flow for your swings. What could I have worked on better? I said, looking back, I could have kept 10 to 20% of the position as a runner as GME looks like it's going much lower with the overvaluation. The one minute opening range trade break had an ATR of 4.55. This is not optimal at all and makes the position size a lot smaller. And I put, I could have added once I saw a big jump up in relative volume on open, all I had to do was wait for GME to have a gap under VWAP and that would have been the perfect spot to step in with size and that's something I didn't do. And you can see in these pictures I highlighted, um, in the top left I highlighted that unfilled gap where it was losing VWAP. And I just think that that, that is uh, you know, a big sign that a, a big seller is stepping in there and they don't even care to fill that gap. They just want to sell it down. Yeah, you're totally on the right track here. This is, this is really good to look at. And you can then take steps further, which is you can find stocks aren't just going to gap up and fail right away and be as easy as this one. There's all, another pattern which can be a really good short as well. DKNG, you saw this uh, this week in it. DKNG got upgraded, uh, had a push to the upside, blew out the shorts, uh, and then rolled over, had a rollover pattern after it was just up way too much intraday, not sustainable prices intraday. And so you can look for that rollover pattern. Gaps up, it's really um, vertical to the upside, not at a sustainable price, rollover pattern, and you can start to make that into a short as well. That's on the same track as to what you're doing right here, uh, and, and might be the next logical pattern for you to be looking at that's comparable to this. Awesome. So have you learned anything in two weeks? Oh, I've learned so much. I'm like, uh, I'm like in heaven. All right, good. So we'll, uh, we'll be much harder on you next time. <laughs> okay. But good stuff. Now, really, seriously, great stock selection, great pattern. Good job observing a pattern that has edge. That's what it's all about. Hey, go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos that we're producing for you in the trading community. And please take the time to add your feedback in the comment section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video. From all of us at SMB, train and trade well.